for years, I taught a graduate level seminar. This was uh, for doctoral students that was focused on the space between our mindsets and leadership and the impact of those things on real people. So it was a very philosophical kind of class, but it also was experiential and I think very practical as well. So it was kind of connecting those things together. And it was a class that allowed students to go deep on topics that were complex and affecting them every day. Um, and every week I asked them to write a paper on a question that most of us don't think about every day. And uh, one of those questions was, does sacrifice have to hurt? Right now, I'm thinking you're probably grateful you weren't one of my students, or maybe in my best world, you might be wishing you had been. Um, I wasn't trying to intentionally provoke them, bring them down or to twist their brains up, but I was attempting to bring them closer to one of the most basic tensions in our humanity and our leadership, the tension between self-sacrifice and self-preservation. Um, and it's been one of the most important topics of my coaching with senior leaders um, or with our work with first level managers. It's been just an important topic that even though we may not call it that every time that it's been important. I'm Dr. Rob McKenna and welcome to the Wild Conversation, where we make the best thinking in psychology, leadership and organizational science accessible to leaders who are willing to learn and edit for their sake and also for the sake of others. And today we're, we're in this moment where we're wrapping up our series on risky leadership topics and specifically today, if you didn't get that already, sacrifice. Um, and I gotta tell you, as I prepared for this little chat about sacrifice, I was reminded of how personal this is and being very real about the things that I would sacrifice and those things that I may not be willing to. And even regarding the wild conversation, um, I would say whether you are listening to this as, as a live as part of the wild conversation community right now, or as, as you're listening to it afterwards in the wild podcast, if you hear nothing else, I hope you'll hear me that I don't think we have to sacrifice everything or that we maybe should ask leaders to do that. But that I think we maybe my conviction is that we must be willing to take a closer look at the very personal and organizational costs that may be necessary if we're to become the leaders that we aspire to be. And what I, what I realized over the years and continue to experience is how difficult it is to think about sacrifice, how rarely we do it. We are more naturally pulled towards things that emphasize finding ourselves than in anything that might smell like it's about losing ourselves. And I hope you please don't hear me suggesting that things like self-awareness, identity, self-conservation, -conser and even self-preservation aren't important but also know that they don't represent a whole picture of what it means to be us. I know that's true because how true it was for my students to consider personal sacrifices. And while my question of whether or not sacrifice has to hurt felt honest and inviting, I have to admit I was surprised at how many of them said no, that sacrifice did not have to hurt. And I think I was trying to listen to that and trying to understand what they meant. My first book uh, was called Dying to Lead, Sacrificial Leadership in a Self-Centered World. And my point in writing that book was to go straight at the tension between self-sacrifice and self-preservation. Even the title was intended to highlight that tension. And from a leadership perspective, whether we are parents or presidents, I was inviting readers into the reality that so much of it is about wanting it and being willing to let it go. To step up to do anything well requires a sense of ourselves and an accumulation of experiences, resources and confidence and, and a buildup of the things that are ours. Like that's quite frankly what it, a lot of it's about. Every accomplishment, win, even failure, and even every dollar adds to things that to, adds things to us that provide the foundation to accomplish incredible things. The, the difference between self-preservation and self-sacrifice, I believe, is an awareness that our accomplishments add to us and our th the things that we have around us add to us, but they don't define us. And I've often described the importance of understanding the context in which we live. Like, and I'll, I'll say this. So some of you don't know this. Actually, probably most of you don't know this. That the new Call of Duty dropped last night, which is kind of an important thing for someone. I know. I know it's important, but it's important to me. Okay, so it did. Um, and I'll tell you this, that video game developers often call the context if we're to understand context, they call it the universe. When you build a video game, it's necessary for the developer to define the rules of the actual 
programming that will drive the assumption decisions of the players playing the game. They have the power to do that. And I will say that the, the mission statement of the organization we built, Wild Leaders, says our goal is to intentionally prepare a generation of courageous and sacrificial leaders who will lead the way in reflecting light into a world where darkness is the default. And I would say, and it goes on, there's another a statement that follows that, but it's a, it's a fairly controversial statement in some spaces, some contexts, because it assumes a certain kind of universe. It assumes that to do anything worthwhile in our world is to consider the importance of both courage and sacrifice. And that without that consideration, we may default to a lack of awareness. And in the universe I aspire to live in, in my sense of myself and my value is necessary. Like the understanding who I am is a necessary part of that. And I believe the same is true for you. But that the story doesn't end there. Upon acceptance of my own value, and my own self-worth, sacrifices will be necessary in my movement toward wholeness. And courageous and sacrificial leaders are those we would describe as those willing to go first in spite of their reluctance and fear, and those willing to consider the greatest sacrifices they may be called or summoned to make, potentially paying that price without compensation or even credit. It's a big proposition. And unless you've never, just make it practical, unless you've never been in a close relationship with another person, you understand sacrifice. So I think that's probably most of us. Sacrificial leadership is not about a person giving up everything all the time and paying the price every day. But I think it is about an honest consideration of the necessary personal costs of living in right relationship with others. And if that doesn't sound organizational, aren't organizations just giant relational things, right, in some ways? So often we have so little permission to consider the personal costs we may need to pay and sacrifice is thrown around sometimes, but rarely considered at a deeper, deeply personal level. And it's no wonder that my students struggled with the question of whether or not sacrifice had to hurt. If sacrifice has to hurt and is also important for us to consider, who among us is going to step to the front of the sacrificial line? We've all heard parents who said, you've heard me say this before, that they would die for their children. And I would say without dismissing how important that is, I'm not sure how interesting it is. I think I even mentioned this last week. As parents, we could say all day long that, but you know, we could say that all day long. But what would be interesting is whether or not do whether or not we'd be willing to turn off our phone. I don't know why this is my example, because our spouse asked us to after noticing that our son or daughter was waiting to play catch in the front yard. I think that's a little bit more interesting, quite frankly, because that maybe I've been there and I don't know if the rest of you have. Literally dying for our child might be easier than letting go of our inner selfishness that locks down when we are asked to do something simple like turning off our phone. Leading sacrificially in full awareness of our own values and convictions requires us to consider the toughest things for us to put on the altar. And some of those things, quite frankly, are pretty simple things. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, please. I'm just, uh, without an awareness of those things, we hold on to most tightly we risk a shallowness in our pursuit of wholeness that will lack depth and an entirely different impact on our world. And I think sacrificial leaders are those willing to consider the cost of leading in full awareness of their own value. And I would say even further, they're willing to pay the necessary personal costs for those they're called to serve. So how do you know what's sacred to you in your aspiration to become whole as a leader? How do you know? How do you begin to understand what sacrifice looks like for you? And I'm speaking to myself here too. And how does that relate to self-preservation? And here are a few ways to think about sacrifice in our own lives. I want to give you just a few ways. I would say in this, this risky leadership topics, <laughs> I will get off this bandwagon of my 10 things, but I've got 10. All right. I have them again because I think these things are complex. And so my best way was to, I know some of you are laughing, but my best way was to say like, here's the things that, that have come to mind. And as I looked out in, in other people's writing and research that came to mind. And I would say in any situation you're facing your life and work, what would be hardest to let go is kind of the start. But let me go. Let's go with it. So number one, it's painful to let go or to give. Sacrifice probably always involves a bit of pain. If you want to know whether or not you are over the target of your own sacrificial character development, think about the things that would be most difficult for you to completely surrender. While you may not be called to surrender those things, and I really mean that, you will be one step closer to knowing what you hold on to so tightly that's strangling your capacity to be the person you long to be. Number two, 
I know that you'll have these, you'll have this list. So number two is it often comes as nudges we likely ignore. If you're like me, moments to let go and sacrifice something come almost daily. And sometimes it's the little things. And I would say like, whether it's my ego, how others see me, my discomfort, my obsession with my obsession with comfort, <laughs> I feel these nudges, but often push them away. Those nudges on your heart might be telling you something like a good friend gently. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, a good friend or a spouse, like gently elbowing you or kicking your leg under the table when you've been inappropriate or out of line. Those nudges are easier to push away than to let sink in. Number three, you feel some reluctance to offer it. We are all addicted to something. We're all addicted to something. Our best measure of our willingness to sacrifice something is how we respond when someone points it out or asks us to let it go. I once heard it said that if you want to know what kind of servant you are, just take a look at how you respond when someone treats you like one. Reluctance to let go of something is not the problem. The problem is a lack of awareness of the personal cost we may have to pay. So I think that's why being aware of what we hold on to is so critical. Number four. Another thing to kind of throw into this whole mix, this whole sacrificial salad, is that sacrifices are often unlikely or even surprising. A surface level approach to sacrifice would be to suggest that sacrificial character and behaviors are all about giving other people what they want and surrendering our tendency to only focus on what is best for us. While that may be the case sometimes, I think a whole more perspective on sacrificial character is a truly honest assessment of what we hold most closely. And for some of us, it's a list of usual suspects like pride, money, status, and comparison. But here's the interesting thing for others, and keep this in mind, peacekeeping. Peacekeeping, compulsion to fix others or to help everybody. And even speaking up and using our voice is a surprising sacrifice. Different leaders have different things that they hold on to and protect. We spend so little time thinking about the real potential cost to us. It's likely to be a little surprising. Unless you are incredibly thoughtful, most of us don't consider the daily costs we may need to pay to serve others in our world. Number five, the economics of sacrifice. This is a big one. The economics of sacrifice don't make sense. I'm bothered when people try to make it make sense at least not in, in our human perspective. In a universe defined in part by the tension between our own value and our necessary sacrifices, getting something in return or even paying it forward isn't the goal. Certainly there are, I'm not saying there aren't benefits of sacrificial behaviors and leadership, but when we do those things in service of those motives, we lose the power and intent of what sacrificial leadership is all about. There is no supply and demand. I, I studied economics. Like, it's crazy to think about. There's no supply and demand. Just the consideration of the necessary sacrifices. And our, our world is based on an economy of compensation. I'm sorry, just really interesting to think about, right? Of what our, the universe that we live in today is based on. I'll do this for you if you do this for me. And in a sacrificial and more whole reality, ah, man, I do this for you. Number six. Sacrifice is selfless in its motive after consideration of the selfish alternative. We aren't fully prepared for an honest consideration of our potential sacrifices until we're ready to consider the opposite. And I think I, I wrote this. I, I'm sorry if there's too much, but I wrote, you must be in a place where you are ready to consider your selfishness to, to understand selflessness. And that's hard. It's hard for me. Number seven. Sacrifice is customized to the person, just like courage and fear. It's customized to the person. When we, like different people in your organization have different things that they would consider sacrificial. So what's awesome about human beings. When we generalize something like sacrificial leadership or servant leadership to a list of common characteristics or behaviors, we miss the real conversation happening inside of each individual. And similar to the point I made in number four up top, what is painful for me to consider letting go of may be very different from what's on your list. Even the nuance within a potential sacrifice gets interesting. And as an example, like for many of us, giving away our financial resources is hard to consider, but the reasons behind that hesitancy may look very different for you and for me. The reasons why that's hard. 
And for some of you, that's not the sacrifice. You're like, I give money all day long. That's not hard for me. My time, you know what I mean? There's different things like, and this is surprising, but sacrifice for one uh, is not sacrifice for another. And I think being mindful of that when the people that you lead. Number eight, sacrifice requires a, a, a self, a sense of self to fully understand sacrifice. And I kind of have mentioned this, but I don't believe, it's, it's interesting to think about this. Can you sacrifice something you don't have yet? And this reality is that most of us already have something if we stop to see it. But I think there is something to a buildup of a sense of self that then you understand what the sacrifice would be. Number nine, sacrifice involves a surrender of your power to change it, your control. But it cannot be forced. Holy cow, this is a big one. Um, sacrificial character, I, I, I do believe this, that it is, is invited and not prescribed. The release of the power to control the outcomes of our lives is not something that someone else has the power to force. Forcing the sacrifice isn't sacrifice, that's force. And the normative message we hear is that control and power is something to hold, unless, of course, we're blaming others for the power they have. That's, that's complex there. Sacrificial leadership isn't something we command others to adopt, but something we can invite them to consider. I hope though, even the wild conversation is that invitation. And in that way, someone has to be ready for the consideration in their life and in their work. Readiness is invited and not prescribed, just like sacrifice. It's one of the reasons in premarital counseling, I've always asked, I've actually been able to do some of that, believe it or not. Some of you are like, I can't believe Rob got to do premarital counseling. But I have done some of that because I got a chance to, to be officiate a few weddings. And what, I, what I've always asked the couple to consider, those things that will be most challenging for them to sacrifice for the other. And I think it's the same thing for leaders. Every one of us is moving toward a leadership role. Everyone is, should be asked, if we're moving toward that, what sacrifices will be challenging for you if you get this job and why? Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to hear? And by the way, there's a difference between something being taken away and something being offered. A sacrificial character is a character of a willingness to offer that which we may hold on to most tightly. And then number 10, sacrifice is inherently relational. I think that's been a theme throughout this series. Between you and others, um, sacrificial behavior, behaviors only get interesting in the context of our own will in relationship to the will of another. That's what makes life, I think, so challenging and interesting. And oftentimes, the closer we are, the further we are from doing the sacrificial thing. And why is it that we are the are least kind to those closest to us is an example I think about. We'll comfort a friend or even a stranger, but would we offer that same comfort to a family member we're living with every day? And the most surprising and powerful sacrificial behaviors are often toward those that are on the outside would be, those might be, that they might be perceived as easier sacrifices for some of us is interesting. And equally interesting is how we show up in professional situations. In those situations, it's less about our resistance to change and more about the appropriateness and personal conversations about sacrifice. Like, could we talk about this? When was the last time, for example, someone apologized to you at work without qualification or you did? And I, I would say, unfortunately, those kinds of sacrificial moments, times where someone lets go and says they're sorry are so rare. And I just imagine a world where what if they weren't? And I would say just as, I, as we launch into this conversation that sacrificial leadership isn't about laying it all down all the time, but in full light of your value and the courage and conviction that has been wired into you and to thoughtfully and honestly consider what sacrifices may be necessary for each of us to best serve those around us. So let's keep the conversation going.